Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're tackling a really critical concept in structural concrete, something called punching shear. We've looked through the sources, and uh, our mission is to get a handle on this failure mode. It's known for being sudden, sometimes catastrophic. Yeah, sudden is the word. Engineers often call it a brittle failure. Brittle meaning that doesn't really bend or deform much first. It just goes. Exactly. It happens fast, often without much warning at all. It's uh, not like a slow sag. Okay. The sources often use an analogy, right? Something about ice. That's a great one, yeah. Think about putting something really heavy, like right in the middle of a thin sheet of ice. Okay. It doesn't just slowly crack and bend downwards. It just punches right through. Ah. Uh. Okay, I get it. Punching shear. Precisely. Okay. So in concrete, you've got your slab and usually a column supporting it. If that load from the column is too concentrated... It punches through the slab. It punches through. It shears the concrete out in a shape, usually like a truncated cone or maybe a pyramid if, if the column's square. And there's a specific angle mentioned. Yeah, it's typically pretty steep. Um, somewhere between 70 and 35 degrees from the slab surface. It's a sharp break. So it's clearly dangerous. What makes a slab, you know vulnerable to this what are the weak spots well the most obvious thing is the slab thickness itself thicker slab more concrete generally better resistance makes sense more material to push through right and then there's the concrete itself it's compressive strength stronger concrete helps naturally and the column does its size or shape matter absolutely a bigger column spreads the load out more which reduces that concentrated stress okay and shape plays a role too Generally, circular columns tend to perform a bit better against punching shear compared to, say, rectangular ones, especially sharp-cornered ones. But it's not always just about the basic setup, right? There are complications. Oh, definitely. Big ones. Uh, one major issue is having openings in the slab near a column. Like for pipes or ducts. Exactly. You cut a hole near the column, and you've basically reduced the amount of concrete that's available to resist that shear force. It weakens that critical zone. I can see how that would be a problem. What else? Unbalanced moments. This is a big deal, especially at edge columns or even worse, corner columns. Unbalanced moments, meaning the load isn't perfectly centered. Yeah, the slab is trying to bend unevenly around the column. So one side of the column connection gets way more shear stress than the other side. It concentrates the force unevenly. And that makes it more likely to fail there first. Precisely. That's why you worry about punching shear a lot in... Um, what we call flat plate or flat slab systems. Those are the ones without beams between oh. the columns, right? The slab sits directly on the columns. That's them. Very clean look architecturally, but structurally, you lose those beams that help distribute load. So printing <laughs> shear becomes a primary design concern. Also in foundations, like footings under columns. Okay, so engineers know the risks. They know the weak points. How do they actually design against this? How do they prevent it? Well, first step is calculation. They use design codes like ACI 318 in the US or Eurocode 2 in Europe. These codes have specific formulas. And they look at something called the KELA, critical shear perimeter. Yes, that's key. It's essentially an imaginary line drawn a certain distance out from the column face. Engineers calculate the shear stress acting on that perimeter. And check if it's below the concrete's capacity. Right. If the stress is too high for the concrete alone, you have to do something. And the simplest something is just make the slab thicker or the column bigger. Those are the most straightforward, yeah. Thicker slab, bigger column. But sometimes that's not feasible or it's just really expensive. Adding slab thickness adds a lot of weight and material cost and affects building height. So what are the other options? More structural additions. Correct. You can locally thicken the slab just around the column. That's called a drop panel. Okay. Or you can flare out the top of the column itself, making it wider where it meets the slab. That's a column capital. So both of those basically increase the depth in the perimeter right where it's needed most. Exactly. They give the shear stress more area to spread out over. But often even that isn't enough or maybe not the preferred solution. What about adding steel? That's probably the most common method for dealing with high shear stresses, mm. adding shear reinforcement. Like rebar. Specific types, yeah. You can use stirrups, which are basically vertical or sometimes inclined steel bars arranged in a kind of cage around the column within the slab depth. To sort of stitch the potential crack together. 
That's a good way to think about it. They intersect that potential failure plane. Or uh, another very effective type is headed studs. Headed studs. Yeah, they're vertical steel rods, but they have a flat plate, like a head, welded to the top and sometimes the bottom. This provides really good anchorage into the concrete. They work very well. Interesting. Are there even more advanced techniques mentioned? There are. Things like using externally bonded fiber reinforced polymer or FRP strips, like uh, composite materials glued to the slab surface to add strength. Wow, okay. And post tensioning the slab can also help significantly by introducing compression, which counteracts the tensile stresses involved in shear. So, quite a toolbox available. It seems the core idea, though, is managing those high localized stresses, either bulk up the geometry or add specialized reinforcement. That's the essence of it, yeah spread the load, or reinforce against it. Okay, that brings us pretty much to the end. Lots to think about there. Definitely. And it makes you consider, you know, how sensitive this failure mode is. Mm. A small detail, like putting a service opening just a bit too close to a column years after construction. Right. It raises questions about the long-term robustness of some designs, especially flat plates. How do they age? How critical is ongoing inspection and making sure modifications don't accidentally compromise things? What stands out to you as you think about these structures over decades? 